Rod position when you're flipping is everything. If you're in a foot of water, your, you, your cast is going to be different than you're, if in five feet of water. And if you're in ten feet of water, it's going to be different than it was in five feet. So I want my rod, when my bait enters the water in a foot, to be right here. When that fish bites, I want it to be right here. If I'm fishing 20 feet, I want my rod to be right here. The biggest thing when you're flipping, it's a vertical presentation. You, so you, then you do not want to hinder that bait's fall. So rod position is everything. So say I'm in 10 foot of water and I'm at Lake Gunnersville fishing high, deep hydrilla. I need 10 foot of line to do that. And you, you don't want to slow the fall, so you don't want to pitch out here like this and then let the line come off the reel. You need enough line off the reel when the bait hits the water. You follow what I'm saying? So 10 feet of water at Gunnersville, I pitch my bait out there, see where my rod tip is. And then I, will, I want the bait every time I flip, know if I'm 10 feet or two feet or 20 feet to fall on a slack and I call it a controlled slack. I don't like it like this, and, but I don't want it tight because if it's tight, your bait's penduling back to you. That makes sense to all y'all. Controlled slack, that's what you try to achieve with every pitch. So don't hinder the fall of the bait, but stay in contact with it. And you do that by your rod positioning. So a foot of water, you're probably going to be okay right here. Five feet of water, you're probably going to be okay right here. Ten feet of water, you're probably going to be okay right here. And at 20 feet of water, are you following it down with your rod tip? Every cast, you're following it down with your rod tip on the controlled slack line. But what I'm demonstrating to you is different casts for different depths and what you have to do to achieve that perfect rod position when that fish bites. That is critical in catching every one that bites. So, two feet, five feet. 10 feet, 20 feet. Now what do you do? <laughs> how, how are you reacting to set the hook when you got your arm up in the air? Obviously I wouldn't do that if the fish was right under the surface of the water. If he's 18 feet down and 20 feet of hydrilla and I want that bait to free fall, that's the cast that I have to make to achieve that. Okay. That's the cast I have to make to have enough line out so my bait can fall unrestricted. That's an extreme, the 20 feet. Okay. There's very few places grass mats up in 20 feet and actually figure out a way to catch them. That's one of the ways I figured out how to catch them. Most of the time, mat fishing, it's not that big a deal. Five foot or less, you know, it's, a, it's, it's not quite as complicated as the deeper grass situations. But you do not want your rod up here when the fish bites. That's bad. You're all out of position and you're probably not gonna catch that one. You don't want your rod here either. See what I'm saying? You want your rod here, hook set in position. This is where all your power comes in and stuff. This is perfect. Get caught out of position, right? Occasionally, occasionally, but that, it just comes with time on the water. And uh, I mean, I see a lot of guys, tour level guys make cast and pitches and that their bait hits the water and this is always where their rod is. That's really bad. He's gonna bite and it's, it's just a totally bad position to be in when a fish bites. You want your rod right there. I'd say from there to there, be optimum position, not here and not here, whether it's just a tight line, controlled slack. Everybody got it? All right. Hook set. Talk about rod position, and we, we were talking about hook set. Everybody's is different. We talked about the rods, all of that being, you know, needs to be tailor made to your hook set. Like I said, I like to really set the hook hard, so I use a limber rod the most, or a, a parabolic rod is, is the way I design my rods. That's a fast action rod, probably, but a little better for somebody with a little weaker hook set. But I'm a pretty big, big guy, I'm about 220, and I put all of that into every hook set. <laughs> I want to give every, you know, an, 
I set the hook every time like it's a 10 pounder in there. Sometimes it's a one pounder, sometimes it's, you know, sometimes it's a five pounder hopefully, and hopefully he's bigger than that. But, uh, you know, a huge thing with your hook set is getting that fish's head turned and getting him coming out of that cover that you're fishing, whether it's a dock or a log. You don't want a weak hook set and let that fish get the better of you. I mean, all of this stuff from the straight shank, flipping hook, your tungsten weight, your lines, it's putting the odds in your favor. You know, this isn't six pound test and a spinning rod. This is, this is heavy, heavy duty cover and you want to get that fish coming towards you. So, uh, and I can tell you if the setup's right and a 10 pounder bites it, you know, through a, a big thick mat of hyacinths, I can promise you I can pull them right out of there if the setup, if everything's done properly. Yeah, yeah, that, I, I actually watched, I, I'm, I finished fourth at Okeechobee this year and there was a fish catch on there. I watched the show for the first time the other day, right before I came here. And I can remember making the cast, it was probably, uh, it was a super long cast. And there was no way I would ever caught that fish if I would have quit cranking on it. I mean, uh, a big fish in places they live under docks and stuff, I mean, they're gonna do everything they can to get away. And I don't want to give an, any advantage I don't want to give him a, a, a second and uh, that that that's definitely true I agree with that a hundred percent and uh, you know I was thinking about the other day when I saw that show like I'd have never caught that fish if I'd have quit reeling because he was just coming over bull rushes and logs and you know everything else so uh, so I agree with that a hundred percent if you go back after your boat was fixed and try to catch that fish again in the classic? <laughs> no. Um, the fish I lost in the classic, um, I could probably get asked about that more at these shows than anywhere else. I really forgot about it five minutes after it happened, but uh, every time I come to one of these things that gets brought up, I mean, that's the biggest tournament I fished in that fish. You know, the main thing's interesting. I, I got a good look at him. Um, no, I didn't try to go back and catch it. It was the final day of the Classic and only had about two hours left to go and only had three fish in my life. Well, I didn't think about going back when I lost him. <laughs> but uh, that fish was actually on my signature series jig and I actually lost four fish and I had four bites and I lost all four of them and that was the fourth one. I don't know why that happened. I didn't feel like I did anything wrong, but you know, I flipped into the end of a pine tree with a bunch of pine needles and the fish bit five feet down and as soon as I set the hook, he was hung five feet down. And it all happened so quick, and you can see, it wasn't but like maybe four or five seconds the whole time, but the fish came free. He came up right to the surface and got hung again. And it was just a spider web of branches, and the fish is here, his belly is upside down, and he was just laying there. And for half a second, I'm thinking, I got you now, sucker. I'm fixing to catch this thing when the Bassmaster Classic, you know? And, uh, but that's not what happened. I mean, I, as soon as I started moving towards that fish, the fish just flounced one time and I could see my jig and the hung, the point of my jig hung in the tree and the fish was gone. So that's part of fishing. The next tournament, I boat flipped four, four pounders in that, in one day of that tournament, they all came off and landed in the boat. So. <laughs> <laughs> so any more questions about that? For me, I don't think I've ever boat flipped one of a double digit fish, but I've boat flipped a nine pounder before. And, and if, you, if you get that fish coming towards you, if that fish is pulling away, I would never try to do it. But most of the time they're so hot and they're, they're jumping and stuff and you can get one to time that jump right where he's actually coming towards you, you can boat flip a really big fish with the right equipment. And, and I, I did probably do it more than most guys. So it doesn't bother me a bit. And the reason you do that is because they're coming towards you? The reason I do that is I don't get paid unless they're in my live well. Yeah. <laughs>